Halloween 2020, Debbie Dickerson was sitting at home when she first felt something wasn't right. It turns out her body was in the early stages of fighting ALS. Shortly after her official diagnosis, we started following Debbie's journey. And tonight, we unfortunately have to tell you she is feeling the effects of the disease more than ever. But she has plenty of reason to be hopeful. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about is this fatigue that you've been having. Yeah, it's yeah. horrible. Debbie Dickerson is back at the doctor. Okay, good. This time with who she calls a rock star in the world of ALS. You'll have a decision to make. And he certainly dresses like one. Dr. Richard Bedlack, director of Duke University's ALS clinic. There's a lot of things, you know, that can happen to someone with ALS. Everything Bedlack does, down to his threats, is to promote positivity. Unfortunately, appeared to, you know, have some new problems since last time. But Debbie's disease is not moving in the same direction. You know, her fatigue, which has been a chronic problem from the beginning, was worse, and she was experiencing some nausea. Kind of makes me a little dizzy at times. It For the first time, Debbie says she's definitely feeling its effects. I feel like the insides are shaking. You know, like you may, may not be able to see it on the outside, but I, I feel it on the, you know, inside. And the Duke team's testing reflects that. She was now having some trouble um, with handwriting, just very mild, but wasn't there at all a couple months previously. Blow hard. Good. They do an ALS functional rating score. 48's normal. Debbie was at 47 last time, and now she's down to a 45. She had a little bit more hand weakness than she had the time before, and her walking seemed to be a little bit slower and more cautious. Great big breath in. Cough. <laughs> Her breathing function on a scale to 100 was also deflated. And she had gone from 82% just a couple months previous to 69% when I saw her last week. You look right at me, I'm gonna check a reflex in your face, okay? Mm -hmm. They've developed a plan, stopping a medication she didn't react well to. Push me back. Going to a mental health therapist and doing some exercises. Lift up your knee for me. Can you lift it right into my hand? But now it's getting to the point where stopping working might be beneficial. See how your thumb moves a little bit when I do that? On average, people with the disease live two to three years from symptom onset. You know, she's obviously going to do much better than that. I mean, she's almost two years from symptom onset now. But outside of a suit and a smile, Bedlack can provide statistics to help maintain hope. Those conversations were very short back in the late 90s. It was basically, this is what you have, go home and get your affairs in order. And you know now we have a lot of things we can offer. For of all the cases he's familiar with, some people stop progressing. He calls them plateaus. And while it's widely thought that ALS is deadly no matter what, Bedlack says there are some cases of survival. Usually that recovery is small and transient, but there's 57 people that I know of from all over the world who appear to have completely recovered. For now, they'll stick to the plan, armed with knowledge and technology to confront ALS. But Bedlack says when it comes to this disease, the best medicine comes from within. 4,000 patients that I've personally evaluated, those that found a way to stay optimistic and hopeful, they just did so much better as far as their progression and their quality of life. And speaking of quality of life, Debbie continues to get out and live as much as possible. She just got back from a cruise last week. I was texting with her earlier tonight as she said her favorite was 80s night and she still has those plans to go skydiving at some point.